Hello. Good afternoon. So this is the most important conference each year for me. And uh, uh, I was joining the first Open Hardware Summit like several years ago. And uh, it totally shifts see the studio and my prospection to the ecosystem, to the community. So I'd like to thank you all for letting me know what it's like to join the Open Hardware World. <clears throat> so um, joining the conference also made me uh, think what I can contribute in a different perspective. So I'm going to talk a lot about factories. So CD has been providing open source hardware since the very beginning, and we also have a lot of uh, open hardware projects go to production. But uh, a lot of uh, projects get tramped, get delayed where they go to the factories. So the factories look evil. They always give you problems, give you difficulties, and the, you don't know what it is like. It's a blank box. But it, it's, let's look at the factories in Shenzhen. This is uh, Shenzhen back in like 30 years ago. It was just a fisher village. There's no industry in there at all. And then another factories, another of, uh, manufacturers goes to China, and uh, um, people there start to build factories and start to learn how to manufacture things. So it's not a rocket science, and it's many years of accumulation. It's just uh, a know-how that can be inherited. And uh, we don't see a lot of textbook talking about manufacturing. But these people, they, uh, we have a lot of hands-on uh, experiences, and we pass it along. Uh, to the business itself. So Shenzhen for now is becoming the humble technology center of China and it's looking fabulous and real expensive on the houses. And uh, this is 2009. A lot of familiar faces come over to Shenzhen for the first time and uh, I was totally amazed that I have a chance to, to meet them all. So. Uh, this, this is opening the window to the makers to Shenzhen and they become the first explorer to share the story about what's happening there. And uh, I went to Shenzhen in 2008, but I feel too lonely, so we created the makerspace in Shenzhen in 2012 after I seen so many makerspaces in, in the States. And I'm so jealous and I want to create one there. And also we helped create the first hardware incubator uh, hacks in 2013. And what's happening last year is becoming a huge uh, wipe that the premier minister came over to uh, the makerspace, which the whole country is looking for to support the maker movement. It feels as if that it's becoming very easy for any design which goes to manufacture because this city, this country is welcoming, but it's not. So we talk a lot about open source hardware, but how many of them are manufacturable? I don't think many. This is a very sad story. It's from our friend David Vondo. He made the, the thinnest uh, uh, e-paper watch a few years ago. And uh, it was a very successful campaign. But whenever he goes to manufacture, he went to Flextronics. Because he wants to keep the transparent to his bankers because it's causing delay and it's very complex to have the new uh, way of manufacturing. So he keep posting uh, the know-how from manufacturer and uh, gradually Flextronics feel panic. They don't want people to understand what they use, how they did to manufacture these watches. They are very much used to a very closed way of doing business. So they stopped this watch by raising a very high NIE that the uh, Kickstarter uh, money cannot support that. So this, um, David Wando has to cancel this project and uh, to share all the design files, all the know-hows to the bankers. It's a sad story because the factory, they don't want to open and the makers who are making products wants to go to manufacture does not know the manufacturer know-how. Open source hardware has resolved uh, very important problems how to bring your idea into life to have the first minimal viable products, how to 
um, have the prototypes very easily to from other people's creations. And uh, whenever you want to manufacture from one piece to several hundreds to 10,000 pieces, you need to not only program the firmware, you need to deal with factories, you need to work with the factory workers, how to uh, ask them to follow what you uh, expected to have. But the, I see very few open hardware design cover this domain. If we line this up, you have an idea, it's the design. If it goes further, you have prototype, what's 0 0.1. But you need to, a lot of efforts to have the first engineering sample. That's one. So we have a lot of open source designs which have the schematics. They have the API. Then further, they have the layout, the CAD file, the build materials, the firmware. But what's beyond? What if you want to manufacture for 100 pieces? You at least need some test plans. But there are so many makers come to us because we have suffering a lot from this. A lot of makers come to us and uh, they didn't know that needs a proper test plan. They didn't know that needs a test jig. They're thinking manufacturing is just uh, like copy machines. But they were a lot of ways you need to do, like how to parallelize that. Whenever you go larger volumes, you need to set up the quality standards. You need to make the test jigs. You need to have the SOP, standard operating procedures, asking the people to follow to do it exactly right. Because they are not yourself. And uh, you need to worry about certificates. It might be too late whenever you're manufacturing one thousand pieces and you rethink certificates. And also, if it's more than 10,000 pieces, it usually needs you to go back to the very beginning and to redesign it to meet fur further requirements like auto-testing, like you to do six schema, you to DFM EA. Now, I don't see any of this knowledge included open source design, which cost a lot of open source design trapped in the middle. Whenever there's people liking it, but there's no enough knowledge to support it to go further. So if we see open source hardware is very much like open source software and its compilers, which is manufactured, but the compiler before was not catering to what we are doing. So we, ne we need a new compiler. This is Shenzhen. It's not only big factories. It's mainly consists of a lot of small to medium sized factories. Like from two people's workshop, to 100 people's factories that can very fast to iterate. And uh, I think that's a, uh, the only phenomenon I see in China is if factories, they are clustered. For example, to the east of Shenzhen, there are um, over 1,000 jewelry factories that are clustered in one single town. And there are PCB factories to the west of the city that are clustered in a very small town. So if we go to each of the region, we can actually have a lot of alternatives. You can find a lot of talents, but they are not ready to interface with people like us. It's a very difficult way to build up the relationship to convince that we are the proper customers. We have some interesting orders. It's two different systems. Even I speak Chinese, I cannot deal with them very easily. So we are planning to build this. It's called X Factory. We want to have an open factory that everybody can go in and to build their own products. But it's not a tech shop. It's actually in the interface to local factories. We will share the same equipments with factories around this place. And we will invite the technicians uh, we invite the factory owners come to share their know-how. In return, they can get some very high profit, low volume water, so they can have much better uh, income. But by doing this, we, we need to have the, a context that the manufacturer know-how can be documented and be shared among the world. And on the other hand, we will be um, inviting the global makers, like especially the people in this room, to come to Shenzhen and to work with us, to work with these factories, to discover and document the know-how. Actually, I tried to pronounce this as design from manufacturer for a previous uh, 
of hardware summit, but、uh, I'm not so good in executing that, because back in the factories, whoever knows well about the technologies, who are very experienced, they don't know how to document and share with people. So if you join us, going though, going there, to document, I think that could be very structured, very easy to、uh, re replicate knowledge use. And the the magic also is whenever you go there to use the factory to manufacture things, it's very easy to ramp up, because all the factory around they are ready to help. So that's why we are seeing, we are thinking, to complete open source with the second half. Which is to duplicate, which is to manufacture in larger volumes, much more easy than before. It's not just a, a concept. Oops. We should have built. We we should have accomplished、uh, by the end of last year, but it has delayed for one year. We are about to finish that this month. It will be something look like this.、Um, it will be in a place called Wanker City in Shenzhen. It's surrounded by all kinds of designers, architectures. So there are two meaning of this. First, we want to invite the furniture companies to join us. They know how to make furnitures, but they don't know how to have technologies inside. They don't know how to have AI inside their chairs. But we can go there and talk with them. They, you don't want to make a chair by yourself because it has been existing there for decades. So makers can work flawlessly with the industries to generate the next chair. And also, they have all the distribution channels to help to sell to distribute the chairs to their customers. And also, we have the real estate companies around. They are willing to pay for these chairs. So we are. We want to create a new ecosystem that can be duplicated, starting from one X factory. But there are, could be more beyond. Like if we talk about, like automobile, motorbikes, they are also clustered. If we talk about wearables, there are so many places. They have they have all the closest factories, and there are places with a lot of bags. So we can start. One X factory by one, and we invite all the open source technologies to go merge into them, and to discover the manufacturing know-how to become the new interface. So that's about my talk, and、uh, I have an invitation. I want to invite you guys come over to Shenzhen next year for Open Hardware Summit 2017. Hope you like it, and、uh, I think I have a few minutes for questions. If anyone, if any questions or suggestions, I don't know how to carry this on to invite you guys coming to the X Factory because I'm still thinking. So let's figure it out by more conversations, starting by just ha have a ticket away, just fly there and sit down and find out. So we look at the the process. Okay. So,、uh, so for small people, for the makers like one, two, five people kind of groups who are trying to step up the manufacturing, maybe from like 100 to 1,000 units or thereabout, and they're trying to get involved with making their design manufacturable, make, making it testable. What kinds of tools are available to those kinds of groups of people? So、uh, we will look at all different different industries. Like for now, for the beginning, it's about architectures, smart buildings. So we'll look at things we need to make furniture, to make、uh, all the like labs, lights, doors. So、uh, we will prepare a, 
of course, some electronic manufacturing. Um, the, the main idea is we make the equipments compatible for the other factories around. So whenever we finish the prototyping here, then understand all the parameter settings to manufacture in uh, natural volumes. And also we will bring in technicians for that. Okay. Um, I was just trying to connect with the um, initial speaker about the problem they had with the components. Um, is it possible that you could get, provide information to the, to the community about what components you guys have readily available to help us develop new products that we're not going to run into the problems they had with their Kickstarter project? Yeah, so um, I think we proposed the Open Path Library a few years ago now. We work very closely with Octopaths to have the Common Path Library. So that's a subset of the popular used components that already we got from the statistical point. But uh, um, from, now, from then on, we can see from the popular open source hardware, if we follow the open source hardware, we actually ha can save a lot of energy in sourcing components because they're probably uh, shared. But uh, what's beyond that is we need to make something which is particular uh, according to some scenarios. So we will keep uh, posting about some packs or about of components, um, and we will list them on the X Factory website. So, what's your take on uh, manufacturing with open hardware equipment? So, you're mentioning the X Factory and having similar equipment in all manufacturing plants to do transfers. Should the equipment be open, or is this somewhat? actually happening already? I think it's a true track, like having the open hardware easy to manufacture and to have some open source hardware manufacturer equipment. We try to do that, but uh, I think they are not a must to mingle. Uh, of course, there are so many um, manufacturer equipments, I can't wait to uh, hack them or to have some open source alternatives. Hi, Eric. Yeah. Um, is it possible for um, companies in the United States to perhaps build a prototyping shop or something that's compatible with X Factory so that uh, the translation of uh, the procedures and for, for production and test can be, to be moved over very easily? Is that something that uh, you see as possible? Yeah, I think it's very possible, and uh, that's the next phrase. Like, we have tried to set up a manufacturer site in California. Uh, we want to portal the manufacturer. Uh, it's like um, the manufacturer should be like a service. As a service, it should be in many spots, just next to what, not next to the users. And uh, the X Factory could be um, like the experiment site, and we have the initial DNA generated and uh, disclosed. Then we can copy it into different locations. Okay, thank you so much, Eric. Okay, thank you all. Hope to see you in Shenzhen.